Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. Today I'm going to show you how to do an easy fix for a fairly common problem that affects a lot of modern O scale engines. That problem is a noisy fan driven smoke unit. A lot of you probably already know what I'm talking about. You get a brand new O scale engine, you bring it home, you put it on the track, you power it up, and along with those great sound effects that are coming out of the engine, you hear this really annoying buzzing or whining sound coming from the fan driven smoke unit. Well, I'm going to show you how to fix that today. Day. It's a very easy fix. It only takes a few minutes and it costs practically nothing. Okay, this is the engine that we're going to work on today. This is a Lionel U30C diesel that was made a couple years ago. So it's pretty new and it has a noisy fan driven smoke unit that we're going to fix today. Now before we go any further, I don't want you to get it into your head that this is a Lionel problem or that this is a problem with this particular model. The only reason I'm using this model for this video is just luck of the draw. This engine happened to have a noisy smoke unit right at the time I was making this video. Any other day, it could be any other engine in my collection. The brand of the engine doesn't matter and the type of engine doesn't matter. This could be Lionel, it could be MT Atlas, Weaver, Third Rail, or any other brand, and it could be a steam engine, a diesel engine, or anything in between. If it has a fan-driven smoke unit, it can potentially have a noisy fan-driven smoke unit, and that's what we're going to fix today. Likewise, even though I'm doing this fix today on a Lionel engine, this fix will work on any fan-driven smoke unit, regardless of the brand of the engine. This fix is brand independent. Now, of course, there will be some differences in how the engine comes apart and how you access the smoke unit, and also the configuration of the smoke units will differ from manufacturer to manufacturer and from model to model. But as long as it has a fan-driven smoke unit, this fix will work. Okay, what I'm going to do now is start the engine up and let you hear just how noisy this smoke unit is. Okay, you can hear the nice sounds coming from the diesel, but if you listen closely, you can hear a really bad whining noise coming from the smoke unit. So that you can better hear it, I'm going to turn the sounds on the engine down. You hear it? Wow, that is a loud smoke unit. It should not be making anywhere near that much noise. Now, the smoke unit is not broken. It's putting out plenty of smoke. It's just making a lot of noise. Well, that's what we're going to fix today. Now, before we get started on the fix, I want to tell you that in order to fix this, we're going to have to open up the engine to get access to the smoke unit. So if you're not comfortable opening up your engines and working on them yourself, you may want to have someone else do this for you. You also need to consider whether or not the engine is still under warranty, because if you open up the engine and start working on it yourself, you could possibly void the warranty. So you need to make a decision about that. Now, as for myself, I like to try to fix minor issues on my own because this is a very easy fix. We're not altering anything. We're just fixing it, and it only takes five or ten minutes, and that's a lot easier than sending it off to the manufacturer, paying for shipping, waiting for a couple weeks while they fix it, and that also costs the company money to fix it. They have to pay somebody to fix it, which cuts into their profits and hurts the company and therefore hurts the hobby. So I like to try to fix these small issues on my own, but you're going to have to make that decision for yourself. So I'm going to show you how to do this fix today, but I'm just going to say if you do it yourself, proceed at your own risk. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the engine on the workbench and get busy fixing it. Okay, I've got the engine in the cradle on the workbench and we're ready to start work. The first thing we're going to do is take the shell off of the engine so that we can get access to the smoke unit. We're going to do that by taking out the screws on the underside of the engine. Now, the number and the location of the screws will vary depending on the model. But in general, you'll have between four and eight screws on a diesel and three or four screws on a steam engine. But again, that will vary depending on the model. This particular model has four screws on the underside. Okay, I've taken the screws out, so now I'll just lift gently and remove the chassis from the shell, like that. Just make sure you do it gently so you don't damage anything. And as you take it out, you'll find some wires that are connected to the shell. These are for lighting, and so I'll just go ahead and disconnect these wires. I just have to make sure I connect them back when I reassemble the engine. Like that. And now, let's set the shell aside so we don't damage it. And now, 
we can work on the smoke unit, which is right here. Here's the smoke unit on this engine, and this is a fairly typical smoke unit for a modern Lionel diesel. Now the configuration and the shape of the smoke unit will differ from engine to engine and from manufacturer to manufacturer, but they all essentially work the same way. Now the first thing we want to do is electrically disconnect the smoke unit from the rest of the engine so that no matter what work we do on the smoke unit, there's no risk that will damage any of the other electronics on the engine. On the underside of the smoke unit, there's a Molex plug, and this is what connects the smoke unit to the electronics on the rest of the engine. So what we're going to do is just grab that plug and just gently pull it out like that. Okay, now that we've electrically isolated the smoke unit from the rest of the engine, we can start disassembling the smoke unit. Now, ordinarily, I would disconnect the entire smoke unit assembly from the engine so that we could work on it independently without it being attached to anything. But in this case, this smoke unit is attached to a bracket, and there are a bunch of wires running through a hole in the bracket. So removing the entire smoke unit from the engine would be kind of a pain. So in this case, we're going to sort of disassemble the smoke unit in place. And that starts by removing this little funnel attachment, and then we'll set that aside. And now we're going to remove a few screws so that we can open up the smoke unit. If we take a look at the top of the smoke unit, we can see that there are a bunch of screws up here. Now, in order to open up the smoke unit, we don't need to remove all of these screws. Now, the arrangement of the screws will vary from model to model, but typically the two screws that are the closest to the exhaust hole are connected to the heating element that produces the smoke. We don't want to remove these screws. We also don't want to remove these screws back here because these are attached to the fan. The screws that we want to remove on this particular smoke unit are here, here, and here. Okay, now we can take the top off like that. And now you can get a good idea of how a smoke unit actually works. This is the heating element, and it sits in this reservoir which has fiberglass wadding in it. And when you pour smoke fluid into the smoke unit, it soaks up into that fiberglass wadding. And then the heating element heats that fluid up and produces smoke. Then this fan blows air through this tube and into the reservoir and then blows the smoke out of the smokestack. Now the noise that we're hearing is coming from the fan. So this is what we need to work on. So now we can set the rest of the engine aside and focus on this piece. Okay, here's the fan, and the fan is powered by this miniature DC can motor. The fan blade assembly is up here, and it's surrounded by this casing which is connected to this tube. And the way it works is that the air is sucked in through here, and then the blades blow the air through this tube, through the smoke unit, and then out the smokestack, and we get that nice stream of smoke coming out of the top of the engine. Now what we want to do is we want to gain access to the top of the motor here. So to do that, we're going to remove these two screws, one here and one here. Now when we do that, the motor will detach from the board for the most part, and the only thing holding it in place will be these two wires. And so I want to caution you that when the fan motor comes loose, you want to be careful not to jostle it around too much because these wires are very thin and they can easily break off of these terminals. Now if that happens, it's not the end of the world, but you will have to whip out the soldering iron and reattach them to the terminals. Now if that happens, you need to connect the wires in the correct way because this is a DC CAN motor, so it will spin both ways depending on how it's connected. So if you look right here, this end is marked positive, and that's where the red is attached to. And then down here, this is the negative terminal, and that's where the black wire is connected to. So if the wires do become disconnected, make sure you solder them back in this way. Red to positive, black to the negative. Now, if the motor that you're working on isn't marked like this one is, you could take an X-Acto knife or something and just make a little scratch where the red wire is connected to make sure that you know that that's the positive side so that if they become disconnected, you know which way to connect the wires back. Anyway, let's go ahead and take out these two screws.
The screws are out, so now the motor will sort of detach from the board like that, and the only thing holding it to the board now are those two thin wires. So we want to be careful. We'll set the board on the table, and this casing now comes off, and we'll set that aside. And now you can see the fan blade assembly. There it is right there. The next thing we want to do is remove the fan blade assembly, and that's easily done by sliding a flat blade screwdriver up under there and just gently prying it off. And once it's up most of the way, you can kind of pull it the rest of the way by hand. Like that. There it is. And we'll set that aside now. And now, you're looking at the heart of the problem, which is the motor axle, which is this rod looking thing right here. Okay, the reason this fan is making so much noise is because the motor axle here is coming up through this hole in the metal case. When power is applied to the motor, that spins the axle, which in turn spins the fan blades. Well, what's happening is this metal axle is rubbing up against the sides of this metal hole. That's what's creating the whining and grinding sound. What it needs is lubrication, so believe it or not, the fix for the noisy fan-driven smoke unit is a single drop of oil. Here's the oil that I'm going to use today. The brand is Hobby Lube and the product is Ultralight HL661. The brand really doesn't matter. You can use anything you want just as long as it's a good general purpose light oil. Okay, so here's the motor and what I'm going to do is put a drop of oil right here at the base where the axle meets the casing for the motor. So right there. And when I say a drop of oil, I really mean a single drop of oil. A little oil goes a long way here. You don't want to overdo it. Okay, so with the oil now in place, the last thing we're going to do before we start putting this thing back together is to power up the motor so that we can work that oil down into the motor and completely lubricate that axle. We're going to do that with a 9-volt battery. Now, you can use a brand new 9-volt battery if you want to, but if you have an older 9-volt battery sitting around, that's even better because these miniature DC CAN motors don't require a full 9 volts. They only need maybe 5 volts, and so an old 9-volt battery is perfect for testing these motors. Now, a new one's not going to hurt it because we're only going to be doing it for a couple seconds, but this is a good use for old batteries because when batteries die, they don't die. They're not out of power. They just don't have 9 volts anymore, and so it, they're perfect for doing little tests like this. So I keep my old 9-volt batteries, and I use them all the time for little tests like this. So what we're going to do is connect the battery terminals to these little terminals on the board because these are connected to those black and red wires that go to the motor and they're labeled positive and negative so I'm going to take the positive terminal on the battery and connect it here and the negative to the negative and it'll power up the motor just like that just like that and when it powers up it sucks that oil down into the motor and lubricates that axle. And just to be on the safe side, we'll reverse the battery and spin the motor the other direction just to make sure we're getting it completely lubricated. And now one more time in the right direction. And there we go. Okay, so now we can start putting the fan back together. So the first thing we're going to do is take the fan blade assembly and slide it back onto the axle and when you do this don't slam it all the way down you want a little gap at the bottom just a little bit of a gap just like that the next thing we'll do is take that casing and reattach it to the fan like that and then put it on the board and we're going to put those two screws back in place and that will secure the fan and the casing to the board Okay, I've reattached the fan assembly to the board. Now, before I reattach the board to the rest of the smoke unit on the engine, I want to power up the motor one more time just to make sure it's working okay because I reattached the fan blade assembly and this casing, and I just want to make sure nothing's rubbing the wrong way or anything. I'd rather find out now than after I've got the engine back together. So I'm going to take that 9-volt battery again and just power it up real quick just to make sure it sounds okay. Sounds fine. 
Okay, we're back at the engine and I'm gonna reattach the board to the rest of the smoke unit. Before I do that, I do wanna put a few drops of smoke fluid into the smoke fluid reservoir, into that fiberglass wadding, just to make sure it doesn't start up dry. And now I'll reattach this board. Now with this particular smoke unit, there are two things I wanna be mindful of. First of all, this rubber tube that comes out of the fan assembly needs to reattach to this metal tube, which then goes into the smoke reservoir. And then the heating element needs to seat nicely in this fiberglass wadding. So I'm going to put that rubber tube around that metal tube first, like that. And now I'll just seat this down in there. Now, on some smoke units, they'll have a paper gasket that goes around the top of the reservoir. This particular smoke unit doesn't have one, but if yours does, make sure that gasket is back in place. So I'll just seat that in place like that. And now we'll put back in those three screws we took out. Now that the screws are back in place, we'll put this little funnel piece back on top of the exhaust port like that. The last thing we want to do is reconnect this Molex plug so that the smoke unit is once again electrically connected to the rest of the engine. Like that. Okay, the only thing left to do is to put the shell back on the engine. Now when you do it, just make sure you reconnect any cords that were disconnected when you took it off. Also make sure that you don't pinch any wires when you put the shell back on. And then also make sure that this exhaust funnel lines up with the hole in the top of the shell for the exhaust stack. Alright, I've got the engine back on the track, so I'm going to power it up and we'll see if that smoke unit sounds any better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the sounds down, and already I can tell there's a big difference. Okay, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there is a significant difference in the way this thing sounds now as compared to the way it sounded before. The smoke unit is much quieter. It has a much smoother, consistent sound. It's still making a little bit of noise. That's normal because there is a motor in there that's turning a fan. So it's normal for it to make a little bit of noise, but it's nowhere near as loud as it was before. To illustrate this difference, let me show you a little bit of before and after. Okay, so there you have it. It's amazing what one drop of oil will do. And actually, this is one of the most mild reductions in noise that I've seen. I've had other engines that I've done the same fix to, and it's been astounding the difference. It's gone from noisy as heck to whisper quiet. And this fix is especially handy on steam engines because on a steam engine, unlike a diesel, when a steam engine is idling, it doesn't have near as much background noise as a diesel does. And so a noisy smoke unit is much more obvious on a steam engine. And I've done this fix on a few of my steam engines, and the difference was like night and day. It was absolutely incredible. And like I said at the beginning of the video, don't get thrown by whether it's a diesel or a steam engine, or whether it's a Lionel or MTH or Weaver or any other brand. It doesn't matter. If it has a fan-driven smoke unit, this fix will work. You need to lubricate that axle on the motor, and that will fix most of the noise coming from the smoke unit. And this fix also extends beyond the hobby. You can apply this fix to almost any electric motor. I bought a Vornado desk fan a couple weeks ago for my office, and I took the fan out of the box, I put it on my desk, and it ran fine for about 30 minutes, and then it started making a whole bunch of noise. Well, instead of going through the trouble of exchanging it and everything, I just opened up the fan, took the fan blade off, and put a couple drops of oil on the axle, put it back together, and it's been quiet ever since. So you can do this fix on all sorts of electric motors. It's not a smoke unit fix, it's an electric motor fix. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you found this useful. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.